Let's have a look at how to create and use tab stops. Tab stops come from the days of the typewriter, where you could press the tab key to move the next character across to a predefined position. Word has this built in. If you have a look at the ruler bar coming across the top of the screen, just underneath the numbers there are some little grey ticks. There's one there, one there, one there, one there. They are the built-in tab stops. And the way it works is, whenever you press the tab key on your keyboard, that's the one just to the left of the Q key, Whenever you press the tab key, it jumps across to that position. So if I press the tab key once, you can see the cursor is now aligned with that tick. Press it again, it's now aligned with the next one. That means that you can use this to start typing anywhere on the screen. So every time I press the tab key, it jumps across that next position, and that's where I can type. If I switch on the show hide, you can see the effect of that. I press the tab key and it gives you an arrow symbol. That shows you how many times you've pressed the tab key. So I pressed the tab key three times, typed, pressed it four times, typed. So to see the sort of effect of this, you use it to tabulate data. So I've, I use this system to type a few numbers in. I just put one, two, press the tab key after each one, three, tab, four, tab, five, tab, six, tab. Press the enter key to start a new line or a new paragraph. Tab to move on to the first tab position, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, press the enter key, tab to move to the next position, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Hopefully what you can see, and it'll be clearer if I switch off the show height, what you can see is that data is now tabulated. It's set at a set of predefined positions. It helps you align data in a very smooth and easy fashion. That's all very well, but they are predefined steps, and quite often you might want bigger gaps or different types of alignment. So you can override these default tab stops and create your own. At the left-hand side of the ruler, we have the tab style. Now, if, every time you click this button, the type of tab that you can set changes. The default is the left tab. Then we've got a center tab. And then we've got a right align tab and a decimal point tab. It will align information to the decimal point. And then we've got some alignment tools, but I'm not going to go into those just at the moment. So I've clicked through to give us a left align tab. In order to use this left align tab and overwrite the defaults, I just need to click on the ruler bar. So if I want to set a tab, left align tab, at about two centimeters, I can click just underneath number two. And you can see it's put a, a left align tab symbol there for me. And it's overwritten. The default tabs underneath. If I set another one at eight centimeters by clicking just under the eight. See, it's overridden all those default tabs and put a left align tab stop there. Then carries on with the default tab stops. I can remove any of these tabs or move them for that match. I can move them just by clicking and dragging and it resets it. And I can delete it by clicking and just dragging down off the ruler and letting go of the mouse. That's clicking and dragging down off the ruler to remove them. So let's see how this works. We'll set a left align tab at two centimeters. So I've got left align there. Click underneath the two. I'll change this now to a center align tab. And I'll set that at six centimeters just by clicking underneath the six. And then we'll choose a right align tab and set it underneath about 12. So we've got three tab stops now. So let's see how this works. If I press the tab key once, I can put the number one there. Press it again and it jumps across that center line tab position. Actually, I'm going to use words this time. One, tab, two, tab, three. And the reason I'm using words will be apparent in a moment. And I'm pressing the enter key to move down onto the next line. Notice it jumps to the margin. So you've got to remember to press the tab key to jump it back across to that first tab position. So that's tab, four, tab, five. Tab, six, enter key to jump down onto the next line. Tab to move across to the first position. Seven, eight, nine. That should be enough for now. Hopefully what you can see that on the left align tab, it's aligned to the left of the words. So OFS, all nicely lined up. On the central line tab, it's lining, if I scroll that down a little, it might be easier to spot that. It's aligning to the center of the words and the right align tab it's aligning to the right hand side 
of the words. Now remember I said you can move these around if you decided that's too much of a gap between the second column and the third column. We can click and drag that tab and move it back across to the left. Oops, it's gone wrong. Did that on purpose just to show you how difficult working with tabs can be. I'll just undo that. And the reason is that every single line of your document can have its own set of tabs. And that's what happened there when I was on this bottom line and I moved this tab position. It effectively creates a new tab of 10 centimeters just for that line. As if I click on the line above, you'll see the tab is still at 12 centimeters. So that makes working with tabs very tricky. What you need to do is make sure you select all the text you want to work with and then move the tab stops. Just have to bear that in mind. Switch the show hide on, we can see what we've got there. So tab one, tab two, tab three, press the enter key. Tab four, tab five, etc. And everything's nicely lined up to the type of tab style that we've got. That's using the ruler to set and use tabs. But what you can also do is use the menu system. And that is format and drop down to tabs. And that gives you the tab stop dialog box. Now you can see it's already picked up the three tab positions that I already set at 2 centimeters, 6, and 10.6. And that shows you exactly why you would want to use a dialog box rather than clicking. And that's because the one I set at 2 centimeters isn't actually at 2 centimeters, it's at 1.9. So you can use this box to set exact figures. I'm going to clear all the tabs. That just removes them all. Click on OK and you can see all those tab positions have gone. Now I'm going to delete my data and use the menu system to set up some tabs. So we do format, tabs, and then we just simply type in the measurement. You don't have to put the centimetres, it knows it's centimetres. So it's two centimetres. What type of position uh, tab stop do we want? I want this one to be left aligned. And do we want a leader? I'll come back to a leader in a minute. I'm saying no. We then set that tab stop. You can see it's put you in the box underneath. So we've got one tab position set at two centimeters. Click OK. There it is. Back into the menu, format, tabs. I'm going to set another one at nine centimeters. This one at nine centimeters. I want to be center aligned and I want a leader. Now what a leader does, it puts either dots, dashes or a line that leads up to that tab stop. So I'll set that and see what happens. Click set. We've now got two tab stops set and OK. Let's see how this works. So tab to move to the first left tab, type in a number. Press the tab key once. And you can see we're leading up with a series of dots to the second tab stop, which is a center aligned. Press the enter key, tab three, tab four. So you can see there the effect of putting a leader in. Put a row of dots or dashes between the two sets of tabs. Remember when you want to modify, make sure you select all your information. Otherwise you'll set different tab stops. Back onto format, tabs, there's our tab stops. If we want to modify that nine centimeters, for example, I can click on it and change it to be no leader, for example, and then set. And then you can modify them in that way. Select the text, format, tabs, and you can modify them there, or indeed set new ones. Lastly, while we're in this dialog box, remember I told you about the default tab stops? Those are the ones that were already there before we overwrote them. And I said they were fixed. Well, that's not strictly true. They are fixed at 1.27 centimeters. That's this bit here, default tab stops. But we can override it. We can, if I'll just clear all the tabs. We can set this to be anything we want. So if I type five into there, for example, and then okay, then hopefully you can see the tab stops, the default ones, are now at five centimeter gaps. The one main area where people go wrong is when they've got some text on the screen and they want to add a tab stop to it. They'll choose a tab style, set the tab position, and then wonder why the text hasn't jumped across. Simply because you've got to remember, click in front of the text, press the tab key. And that puts that tab.
tab stop into use.